Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is October 23rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. For this segment, I am going to talk about broadly about the Pacific hurricane season, in particular, the Eastern Pacific hurricane season for 2018, and then more specifically, about yet another major hurricane occurring in this region, Hurricane Willow, which is predicted now to make a major uh, strike on the western coast of Mexico as a major hurricane, and then telegraph impacts on through an already soggy and flooded Texas, as well as through the Gulf Coast and into parts of the eastern U.S. over the next four to five days. But before I get into Willa, I, I want to talk overall about the Eastern Pacific hurricane season and about some climate change related influences that are providing fuel for the high number of storms that we are seeing in the Eastern Pacific. At present, we're looking at a sea surface temperature anomaly map showing that most of the Northern Pacific Ocean and really most of the Pacific Ocean in general is displaying much warmer to warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, ranging from around almost three degrees Celsius above average near the equator in association with a trend that looks like it's moving toward El Nino, as well as warmer than normal temperatures off the coast of Mexico in the range of one to 1.2 degrees Celsius above average. And around 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius above average off the U.S. West Coast. Now, if we're talking specifically about the Eastern Pacific Zone, we're, we're looking at a zone in basically this box here, running from the equator to about the 30th, 30 degree north latitude line at, at, the, at the furthest north extent, and around the 340, I'm sorry, 140 degree west latitude line range. So, so this, this box here, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it. Now, there are some cool pools in this zone, primarily produced by upwelling because we've had so many storms in this region recently. However, it's notable that there are not more cool pools in the zone and larger cool pools because we have had so many hurricanes and tropical cyclones in this zone. And with so many forming in this region south of Mexico and, and to the west of Central America, we would tend to expect much cooler sea surface temperatures toward the end of, of a cyclone season that was so intense due to the upwelling forces alone. Uh, at present, we're not seeing that. We, we still see much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures on net, even though there are some cool pools in the region. Now, looking at the 2018 Pacific hurricane season for the Eastern Pacific, we just looking at, at the map up here to the right, we can already see a number of cyclone tracks and, and uh, some odd cyclone tracks moving rather far to the north, in particular striking into the Baja Peninsula region, as well as running well to the north in the more in more of the central pacific zone i'd like to call your attention to a number of of statistics one being the total number of of cyclones at 25 which is a, is a rather large number and a total the total number of major hurricanes at 10 which which is a a, a pretty substantial number of major hurricanes I'd also like to call your attention to the number of Category 5 hurricanes for the Eastern Pacific, namely that there have now been three Category 5 hurricanes. Now, the average for, if you're looking at climatology, the average for number of major hurricanes is three. So, so major hurricanes being category three and above. So three times the number of major hurricanes in this zone and <laughs> three category fives is, is, is a tie for, for the record number of category fives. One other thing to point out is that the accumulated cyclone energy index for 2018 
now is the highest on record. So a, a new record for accumulated cyclone energy, which is a measure of the total energy of all the cyclones that have formed in this zone. So a number of milestones and records already broken in the Eastern Pacific. So, so just to provide you some context uh, of the larger season, the larger hurricane season is ongoing, even as we face another major hurricane strike from Willa over the coming days. So focusing in on Willa, I'd just like to show you the, the satellite shot and zoom in here on Willa if, if well, looks like we're, we got a little lag here. So my apologies, but I wanted to focus in on Willa. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out and see if we can get a better satellite shot of Willa here for a second. So Willa right now is approaching the coast of Mexico and is expect at present, according to the National Hurricane Center, features maximum sustained winds in the range of 130 miles per hour. So still a major hurricane and uh, with 945 millibar minimum intensity. And looking at the projected path of Willa, it appears that the storm is expected to strike along the central western coast of Mexico as a major hurricane sometime late tonight before traversing over the Mexican mainland toward Texas over the next 24 to 48 hours. Looking at some model runs, it does appear that Willa is going to have an impact on the U.S. first by soaking Texas. I'm going to go ahead and just run this GFS model run here. And we see the remnants of Willa moving across the Gulf Coast and then running in toward the eastern U.S. for a major storm event over the coming days, running in through October 27th. So over the next four days, turn, and turning into a coastal loan, a large coastal storm by that time be and moving rather slowly before tracking off to the north and east and producing some frozen precipitation for the northeast as well as heavy rains in association with a warm pattern moving up to the north through october 29th before moving off to the north and east and exiting the u.s as a whole Overall, the storm is expected to dump heavy rains from the Gulf Coast all the way through the U.S. East. And as you can see from the National Weather Service radar, we already have heavy rains across the U.S. Gulf Coast. And this has been part of an ongoing pattern that has inundated Texas and produced major flooding and major flooding range over the past two weeks. So Willis rains are going to add on top of the misery that Texas is already seeing. I'm just going to zoom in on the rainfall totals map here for Texas, showing large sections of Texas receiving 10 to as high as 20 inches of rainfall or more over the past two weeks, with Willis moisture adding on top of, of the rainfall severity that has already occurred over Texas as part of a stalled weather pattern. We've got uh, about a minute and a half left, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about rainfall. The projected rainfall, according to uh, QPF, is expected to range from two to around four inches for sections of Texas and parts of the U.S. East Coast. It's possible that the rainfall totals could push above this amount. We've tended to see some movement above projected ranges in the QPF models. So I'm going to go ahead and try and We've got a little time, so I want to provide you with a, a satellite shot of Willa if we can. There we go. It's finally loaded. So just a close-in satellite shot of, of Willa coming down here as it approaches Mexico. And you're just starting to get some sunlight on the storm. A, a still a very healthy-looking cyclone as it moves off toward the north and east, we can see some of the lights in the Baja Peninsula region, but with much of Mexico and Texas as well, covered by clouds streaming ahead of this very powerful storm. So some new records being broken in the Eastern Pacific as we have multiple category five hurricanes over much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. 
And this is a climate change indicator, these warmer than normal waters fueling stronger storms. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.